Okay, this is question five from the 2021 trial exam, which is the November 2020 reboot of the chemistry exam. It says, study the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve for a certain reaction below. P and Q are the labels of the axes. Now, no matter how much I try to tell people that this is the marks from a test and things like that, P is in fact kinetic energy, okay? It is the kinetic energy of the particles plotted against the number of particles. So at any given temperature, the average kinetic energy of the particles will be somewhere where the peak of the curve is over here, okay? And some of the particles will be very slow, like over here, and some of the particles will be very fast, like over here. And this R is the line of activation energy okay so for a reaction to take place the particles must have the activation energy or greater so this is the maxwell boltzmann curve kinetic energy plotted against number of particles and sometimes you'll see like percentage of particles here but technically it's number of particles so we've done the two axes and the term the, the write down the term for the underlying phrase is activation energy how will the shaded area on the graph be affected when a catalyst is added? Choose from increase, decrease, or remains the same, and use collision theory to explain how the catalyst increases the rate of reaction. Well, if you know your stuff, you'll know that if we put in a catalyst, what happens is the activation energy decreases. So something will happen, like if I add the catalyst, it'll drop the activation energy to somewhere over here, and all of a sudden, the particles having the activation energy or greater will increase. So the shaded area on the graph will increase. Okay. And then what is happening? How is the catalyst increase influencing the rate of reaction? A catalyst gives you a lower activation energy, at least a positive catalyst. Okay. A lower active energy. It's also the alternate pathway. Okay. An alternate pathway for the reaction to occur, but the most important part is the lower activation energy. So this means, as per the curve, the area under the curve means there are more particles with sufficient, more particles with sufficient energy, or you can say um, the activation energy or greater. Yeah, E A or greater. There are more particles with sufficient energy, which means there are more effective collisions. You need to affect reaction rate. You have to have effective collisions. And you can't just say we are having more effective collisions. You have to say per unit time. There are more effective collisions per unit time, which increases the reaction rate. So everything is important here if you want your four marks okay you have to state that there is a lower activation energy you have to state this gives you more particles with sufficient energy to react you have to call them effective collisions and you have to say that the more effective collisions are happening per unit time which is in turn increasing the reaction rate if you want all of your marks you have to be very specific with your language it is effective collisions per unit time. You can also say the rate of infect effective collisions increases, but somehow you have to bring in effective and the time. Now to the second half of the question. It says the reaction between powdered calcium carbonate and excess hydrochloric acid is used to investigate the reaction rate at 25 degrees C, the balanced equation for the reaction is solid calcium carbonate plus two hydrochloric acid goes to calcium chloride plus water plus carbon dioxide. Several experiments are conducted using the same mass of impure calcium carbonate and different initial concentrations of the acid. The graph below, over here people, represents the results obtained Assume that the impurities do not react. For this investigation, write down the controlled variable. Well, what is the independent variable? What are we changing? The concentration of hydrochloric acid. 
what are we measuring the production of co2 in order to determine reaction rate okay so that is your independent and your dependent what are we keeping the same that is what is controlled okay the temperature it said to you we are going to do this at 25 degrees c what else can affect reaction rate we can say what else is affecting reaction rate concentration of the acid but that's our variable that we're checking what else can we check the state of division of the calcium carbonate okay we are all the time using powdered calcium carbonate and what else are we keeping the same that we have excess calcium carbonate but the best one to state is the temperature it is the controlled variable now for the investigation write down a conclusion to write down a conclusion you have to look at the graph and what do we have here concentration of hydrochloric acid plus it against rate of production of co2 average rate of production of co2 so i've got rate against concentration so those are my two variables that we need to write down a relationship with we have a straight line graph passing through the origin this is a directly proportional relationship so my reaction rate which is the one thing on the one axis whoa look at this handwriting reaction rate is directly proportional to concentration of hydrochloric acid okay so you have to you have to state both variables and you have to state their relationship if the graph did not pass through the origin you could not say directly proportional you could say proportional but because it's a straight line graph passing through the origin reaction rate is directly proportional to concentration of hydrochloric acid now it says to you the calcium carbonate in six grams of the impure sample reacts completely with 0,03 moles per cubic decimeter of hydrochloric acid in 26 minutes this 26 minutes is very important it says use the information in the graph to calculate the percentage purity of the calcium carbonate assume that the molar gas volume at 25 is 24,000 cubic centimeters so the no moment you see the words molar gas volume you know at some stage you're going to use n equals v over vm but your vm is going to be 24 not 22,4 over the data sheet because it is now at 25 degrees c so let's go back to the graph can you see they have very handily if you check the concentration of hydrochloric acid they have very handily marked this dotted line for you here at the concentration of hydrochloric acid that is given in the question and if you read across the axis here you will come out at 50. okay so we've got the concentration of hydrochloric acid specified in the question and we've got um, a volume here but just check is this actually a volume read your axis okay this is in fact this axis goes 0, 0,03 moles per cubic decimeter taking the unit over here this one on the other axis over here is in fact 50 cubic centimeters per minute okay it's not telling you that the reaction produced a total of 50 cubic centimeters it is saying that on average 50 cubic centimeters of carbon dioxide was produced per minute okay and they are telling you here in the question that to get the reaction to run to completion they took 26 minutes so what we have to do here is we have to now go and work out how much total what was the total carbon dioxide produced by the reaction okay and if it is 50 cubic centimeters per minute we can write this as the change in volume over the change in time that's what cubic centimeters per minute means okay this is my rate 
So my rate of the graph was 50, which equals the change in volume over the change in time. And in the question, they said it took 26 minutes. Why is this say V when it's supposed say T when it's supposed to say V? Okay, so what was the total volume of carbon dioxide that was made? It is going to be 50 times 26, which is 1,300 cubic centimeters. That is, for the reaction to run to completion, this is how much carbon dioxide was produced. And the moment you've sorted this out, you can follow the normal steps for any stoichiometric calculation. You can take what you are given, turn it into moles, use the mole ratio, and finally find out what you are asked. Okay, so we have been given 1300 cubic centimeters. Let us turn it into moles using N and label your calculations, please. The number of moles of carbon dioxide is equal to the volume of carbon dioxide over the molar gas volume. So because these two units are the same, I'm cheating. Yes, I should not be doing this. You should turn these into cubic decimeters. So I'm going to put the comma in here and we will end up with it in cubic decimeters. You end up with 0, 0.054167, etc. moles of carbon dioxide. Okay, if you want all your marks, you have to show all your steps. So the next thing is you take what you are given. We have done this. We turn it into moles. We now need to use the mole ratio. So from the reaction, we are interested in the calcium carbonate and the carbon dioxide. Neither of them have a co coefficient, which means that the coefficient is one. So the ratio of ca calcium carbonate to carbon dioxide is one is to one. So we know that we had 0, 0.054167. So this means we will have used 0, 0.054167 moles of calcium carbonate. Now remember people, we may not be rounding off randomly. Please, please do not round off in the middle of the calculation. Keep your numbers in your calculator, okay? And make sure that you don't round off, otherwise your answer will be out of the acceptable limits. You need at least four numbers that are numbers for all of these calculations before your final answer. So we found the number of moles of calcium carbonate, but we want to do a percentage purity calculation. Okay. Yes, it says calculate the percentage purity of the calcium carbonate. So we know that to calculate the percentage purity, we need the mass of the pure over the mass of the impure and to turn this into a percentage we multiply by 100. So we've got moles let's find what we are asked. So the mass of calcium carbonate is going to be equal to the number of moles times the molar mass which is 0, 0.054167 moles and then if you check calcium, calcium is 40 carbon is 12, and then we've got three oxygens. If you do the sum, okay, for the molar mass of calcium carbonate, sorry for the scribbles, this will come out to 100. So you end up with 5,4167 grams of calcium carbonate, which means that your percentage purity will be 5,4167. And what was the mass in the question? six grams times a hundred and if you put this into your calculator and you kept all the numbers in your calculator you end up with something like 90,28 percent and then that is your final answer okay that is your final answer 90,28 percent there is an acceptable range in the question and you can um, check what's the acceptable range in the question I think it goes up to 90,33 at the top. And if you rounded this off too early, you will have a slightly lower, lower number. But this is what you get for keeping the numbers in your calculator all the way.